Did you know? The popular peer-to-peer payment service, Zelle, has come under fire in Washington recently for incidents of fraud and scams that are purportedly increasing in number. With almost $500 billion in funds being sent via Zelle in 2021 and growing demand for instant payment capabilities, this digital pot of currency is ripe for the picking. And fraudsters are refining several illicit techniques, siphoning some $440 million from consumers in 2021. As Zelle's popularity grows and the battle between who is responsible for lost funds wages on, let's take a look at what consumers should be on the lookout for to lessen their chances of falling victim. Whether you're using Zelle as part of your financial institution's mobile banking platform or app, or have just downloaded the Zelle app, there are several different ways fraudsters may trick you into sending them money. Before you make a payment with Zelle, it's important to remember to stay vigilant and to take precautions to really understand who you are speaking with because chances are high you will be out of the money for good if it's a scam. Beware of online marketplaces. Whether it's Facebook Marketplace, an Instagram site, or any other e-commerce website. If someone is selling a popular product at an extremely low price, particularly if there is a time frame associated for the special sale, steer clear. You'll probably send the Zelle, but never receive your item. Another popular twist to Facebook Marketplace scams is when a fraudster will reply to a post you created where you're selling something, like a TV or PlayStation, and they request to pay you by Zelle. They tell you to check your email for payment confirmation, but the email claims that your payment is pending until you upgrade to a business account by sending a fee before you can receive your payment. The whole thing is a lie. They're not buying your product, and they end up with whatever money you send them in fees to supposedly upgrade your account. The ever popular romance scam has made its way to Zelle as well. After connecting with someone on a dating or social media site, you are sucked into sending your new love money for medical bills, an emergency or travel money to come visit. Unfortunately, they never come, but requests for money keep rolling in. Speaking of emergencies, that's another method of attack. The fraudsters may pretend to be the IRS or your local utility company requiring money to cover your late payment before your service is shut off or you're arrested. They might even say that they're your cousin, brother, grandchild, or good friend who has fallen on hard times or is stuck out of the country and needs money to recover. In either instance, once you hit send, the money is gone for good. Also, not exclusive to Zelle fraud are instances where your account credentials are stolen via some sort of malware attack. Either you clicked on a link to a spoofed website to get a good deal and entered your login information, or you opened an attachment to pay an invoice that results in account takeover, giving the fraudster the ability to control your account. Always be sure to double check who emails or texts are coming from. Be skeptical of the email address behind the friendly from, the hyperlinked website, and any sort of attachment. Verify the sender by calling them from a phone number you know is correct. Google the name of the business and their contact information. Don't reply to texts from people you don't know. And one final scam before I leave you today. This one is wicked cruel. It's called the pay yourself scam. It's when you receive a text from your financial institution saying they believe they've caught a fraudulent transaction trying to hit your account. Something to the effect of, did you make a purchase of $150 at XYZ company? Once you hit reply to the text, the scammer pretends they work for your bank or credit union and calls you with instructions to reverse the transaction by sending money to yourself with Zelle. The scammer will then send you a text and asks you for the one-time code under the guise of security. If you give them the code, you basically gave them the ability to link their bank account to your Zelle account using your email or phone number. Now, they have the ability to transfer that money you sent to their own account and wreak even more havoc. One thing to realize with many of these payment scams is while you were defrauded, you technically did authorize the payment, meaning you are most likely out of the money. The difference between a fraud and scam is if someone steals your credentials or breaks into your account without your involvement, it's fraud and you will typically get your money back. If you're scammed or tricked into sending money, that's a different story and Zelle doesn't offer the same protections as credit or debit cards. Sending money via Zelle is exactly the same as you giving someone cash. If you give someone $500 in cash because you think you're getting a good deal or to pay the fees to accept your lottery winnings and it turns out they're scamming you, that money is gone. Your financial institution isn't required to give you the cash back. Likewise, they will not give you the cash back after you are scammed through Zelle. Education is key in fighting payments fraud and it takes a village. One thing to keep in mind is that while Zelle is currently under scrutiny, 
These types of scams and fraud can happen on any payments app, so remain vigilant. We encourage you to share this video with your friends, family, coworkers, and neighbors. Want to learn more about other fraud schemes? Check out our other short videos. If you're the victim of a scam, be sure to contact your financial institution and the FBI at 833-FRAUD-11. For other questions about payments or fraud, reach out to us via phone, email, or website chat. And stay safe out there.